You're listening to Kevin at K4TO. I'm breaking in early with a special guest today, Development Director at Family Center La Familia, Anna Leah. How are you? Thank you for being here. I'm good. Thank you for having us. Tell us about Family Center La Familia. So we have been in the Northern Colorado area for almost 30 years now, since 1995. And we're a comprehensive family resource center here in Northern Colorado. And our mission is to provide high quality childcare and support um, families through their journey here in Colorado. Um, And we do that by being also culturally attuned to the needs of the Latinx um, community members that that are here with us. Mm and we, we do it in a very holistic way. We I, I like to say that we come to meet the community wherever their needs are. So whether they come to us because they have a child that needs um, a child care center or their family needs support or a community member who lives in a mobile home park needs assistance, we will serve you in whatever capacity we're able to. And we if, if we're not able to do it, we definitely find out who does as we'd like to collaborate with many other um, people. In, in the area. Great. It's, what do you provide specifically? I mean, I know mm-hmm. there's child development, mm-hmm. child, you know, education and whatnot. But, yeah. But. So our three pillars of service is the first one is El Nidito, which is our early childhood education center. We serve kids that are anywhere between six weeks old and five years old, kind of getting them kindergarten ready. Six weeks. Yeah, six weeks. Wow. It's almost like the same amount of time that you can adopt a pet, you know, (laughs) that you can, (laughs) or a child, (laughs) or a child. Um, so six weeks to five years, we kind of get them really ready for the rest of their lives, starting a kindergarten. Um, it's so important for these kids before they enter kindergarten to have, uh, to be in a place where they feel not only the love that they feel at home, but also being a, in, in a place where they spend a lot of their time. Um, that they feel loved, nurtured, cared for, and they they learn who they are as young individuals. They start getting confidence, not just in their, you know, being able to use a pair of scissors or holding a pencil, but just how to deal with other kids in their classroom and sharing. Socializing. And socializing yeah. is so important. Um, about 60% of the families that we serve at El Nidito are low-income or at-risk families, and they speak other than English at home, primarily Spanish, and we also have some families that speak um, other languages at, at the center. Um, we say that we teach those kids in their heart's language, so we try to talk to the child in the language that they speak at home, and they do get exposed to to other languages while they're at school. So there's English and Spanish class. Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah. Great. I mean, they, they we don't say we're a bilingual school because mm-hmm. that kind of changes who we serve. We're here for the community. Um, we just teach the kid to the child's language. Um, and um, about our, our chef, Phil, he cooks about 750 meals a week. Wow. You know, he, he <laughs> works really hard. We have about 18 teachers through the five classrooms and they are really, really spectacular. You have teachers that are uh, bilingual fully. You have teachers that are monolingual, whether that's just in English or Spanish. And it's just such a friendly and loving and caring place. Both of my kids go there, um, really? thankfully. Nice. And what they've learned as individuals that I-, I feel like as a parent who also needs to work, likes to feel that my kid is in a place that people love them and, and, and care for them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this isn't just uh, clearly not just a daycare yeah no <laughs> you're no, involved yeah in, no. individually mm-hmm. with these kids lives and parents and uh and like you said not necessarily for low income but just for parents that work and go to school at night and, and whatnot and child care is so expensive yeah, so I, we provide sliding scale scholarships um we are the only one in the county up in fort collins that offer early early head start CCAP. We're providing universal pre-K right now that just kind of rolled out in the fall throughout the state. So we, we really try to always find ways to make childcare more affordable because it is so expensive. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm not a parent, but <laughs> it's I've heard stories. Uh, is it on a personal level, 
you said you've been doing this for maybe about a year and a half. Or so. mm-hmm. How did you get involved? Why is this suited for you? I'm a people person. Yeah. And I, I am not from Colorado. I was born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. I left Puerto Rico when I was 18 to pursue uh, my education in dance and be a professional dancer and choreographer. So I've always made it my point to create community wherever I go because my family felt and feels kind of really far away. Um, when I moved to Colorado, I was still mainly in the in the dance world. Um, and I got to a point going through a program through the Chamber of Commerce called Leadership for Collins that really opened up my eyes to more bigger things that I could be doing. I really was craving connecting with uh, Spanish speakers. I was really craving connecting with people that look like me. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity came, I knew about the Family Center through going through the Leadership for Collins program. And I was in a point after having two kids that are now four and two, they were younger then, that I knew I needed a little bit different pace um, with work-life balance. And I found that they were looking for a development director. I kind of did some Googling about what that meant fully because I kind of knew. Um, and I interviewed and I'm never afraid of asking for anything. I'm not afraid of asking for support and donations and creating those relationships with not just people and supporters, but businesses and corporations yeah. and other partners. And I got the job and it's, it's been fantastic. I the the people I get to work with, Gloria Cat, who's our ED since late 2019. She's the first Latina ED in the 30 years of the organization, and that's really I think created even more of a trust and connection within the community. Yeah. Is it basically Latinx oriented? We are seen as like. A Latinx organization. Um, it didn't start that way back in 1995. I think the group of people that came together to create the Family Center La Familia quickly found out. We've always been located north of Old Town in right. Fort Collins, and that's where the majority of the Latinx right. community lives. So I think pretty quickly they figured that they needed to shift and really cater to the needs of that community because they were surrounded by it Um, and very quickly just became that. We are known because a lot of our staff are, they consider themselves Latinos or Latinas and people know that they can walk in through our door and somebody's going to speak, be able to speak Spanish to them. They don't have to wait for the one staff member that's kind of bilingual on their day off um, (laughs) to to help. (laughs) Um, And I know a lot of organizations around there are really doing hard work to becoming more, more diverse in their staff. It will require time. And um, we're just happy to see that growth within other organizations in the community to be able to help the growing population. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Happening organically like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. Um, Well, let's take a quick break. We are speaking with Analia, Development Director at Family Center La Familia. And we're going to take a quick break with the St. Paul and the Broken Bones tune on K4CO. We'll be right back. And welcome back to K4CO. We are joined by special guest, Development Director Analia from Family Center La Familia. And I'm looking over some of your numbers of the last fiscal year. You gave me this little pamphlet here. It's very admirable. $80,000 were awarded in scholarships thanks to amazing support of your donors and partners. Uh, this includes utility support, over $176,000 in utility support. Um, s- s- certain things like 60 child car seats. I mean, and then the mobile home park community leaders having been trained. Uh, just a handful of things that uh, that show how much you give back to your community. Tell us about these, uh, these three pillars of yours that uh, are growing in success. Yeah, so uh, before the break, we discussed our first pillar, with it, which is El, El Nidito, and, and the kids that we get to spend the day with there, about 55 kids daily. Our second pillar is our family support service, and we do anything from, like you said, utility assistance, so they might call in 
and say, hey, you know, I need help paying my utility bill sure. this month. Uh, so we help with that. We provide car seats and we give the car seat training and installation in Spanish as well. Because those could be very complicated oh, yeah. to, to put in the <laughs> car and do all that stuff. <laughs> And just getting access to car seats can be very expensive. So last year we provided 60 car seats to families. We also provide parenting classes. Um, currently we're doing uh, the Incredible Years, which is a 14-week course. And families meet once a week. It's been in the evening. Usually in the past, in the, in the spring, we'll be providing that class during the day just to see how it changes with how many, if, if we can get new people to take it. Mm -hmm. Usually those evening classes, we are always very mindful about providing a dinner, a meal, providing childcare, because we understand that those could be barriers for parents to continue their education, to continue their, their growth. Uh, we also provide uh, mental health classes. We've been doing a lot of that last year. Uh, we've been doing some youth, and we've also been doing then some adult, because um, there's a lot of stigma around mental health. Oh, I know, but that is so mm -hmm. great that you're doing that. I mean, mental health is such a crisis right now. So being able to be in a room full of people that also look like you to discuss your struggles, to know that you're not the you're not alone mm -hmm. in your struggles, you're not alone in feeling that way, has been really beneficial. There, we always provide our. Um, our results of our studies that we kind of do in groups on our website. So if you're ever interested in reading about what our community has learned, you can always go into our website and learn more about, hey, this is what the community got out of these sessions. And it's been very beneficial. And the website's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Way. Yeah, Very go, informative. Go check it out. Um, additionally, we have an advocacy closet. So if people need shampoo, toothpaste, toothbrushes, they can come in. And our caseworkers, so if a person's in need, they can come in once a month and get diapers and things like that. If they come in more than once, then we have one of our uh, family support staff uh, contact them to see how other ways they would need support. They sit down with them, they create goals, they create SMART goals, and they'll meet with them for up to three months just to be able to see, hey, Maybe that person just wants to learn better English so they can get a better job, so they can spend more time with their family because they don't have to work three jobs. Mm -hmm. So they'll definitely start working on those goals with those families. And some of these families have been with us for many years. And to be able to hear the stories of where they started and where they are now is has been very rewarding in my short time there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sounds encouraging. Mm -hmm. And... The other one I was looking at, Mi Voss, mm -hmm. I pronounced my Spanish is like 30 great. years pretty <laughs> rusty. <clears throat> uh, tell us about that one. That's an interesting one with the mobile home community. Yeah, so Mi Voss is one of our, I would call it our youngest program. Um, it started a little bit before the pandemic, uh, and it's our leadership and advocacy program. Primarily, we work with residents in the mobile home parks, and we teach them about their rights as, as renters. We provide assistance in um, leadership training and advocacy. We help raise their voices because a lot of times the mobile home park residents, their voice can be dulled and be made quiet by other people. And we just make sure that their needs are heard. If they need to build confidence to go to city council and discuss an issue, we make sure to provide that support to help them figure out how to present their issue to council uh, we help them organize within their home, home, mobile home parks to see if they want to see changes in their green areas or if they want to have a, you know, um, a block party to be able to, like, create that, that sense of community within mm -hmm. the mobile home parks. Because sometimes between management and resident, there can be a little bit of, of a struggle. Sometimes their rents get hiked up every month and we have to tell we have to educate mm -hmm. them in like, that is not legal. These are ways that you can right. fight that. So you're looking out for these people that yes. don't have Because we, I, think, I think we've all been there. We're like, yeah. oh, if, if a landlord tells me this, it has to be right. And you right. don't question it. Or insurance or anything, just yeah. because it is what it is. And you, you do have to question things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's a great idea. I've done it probably to a fault. <laughs> <laughs> How does money help? And uh, obviously, it, it 
uh, it goes towards all these great programs and you give back. Uh, but you rely on donors, volunteers, and whatnot, I assume. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we cannot do this work alone. We do this work because other people want to join us in our mission. Because other people believe that children, families, and community members deserve the right to feel safe, to feel supported, and to feel like they can thrive, regardless of their social um, economic position we all have the right to feel safe, supported, and thriving. And we have a great amount of support in the community. We always need more, especially as, as years go by, things get more expensive, and we just need to keep providing these services. It's, it's not, we're doing our best, and we're definitely creating impact in the community, but the need is still there. Of course. It the probably, need, yeah. Always will be, I'm yeah. sure. Yes. But, yeah. well, thanks to programs like this that uh, do what you do, I mean, th that is the, out there for you. How does one come to you? I mean, mm -hmm. just find you, well, of course, there's the website, but not everyone has internet access. But, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they just look, they can just walk in, give you a call, just ask. Yes, absolutely. For yes. Um, if, if there's a community member in need, you should, like you said, you know, they, they might be using their cell phone as internet. That's their computer, yeah. I would say. And we notice even through the pandemic when all the resources were needing to be online, we were helping community members even sign up for an email because people didn't even have an email yeah, address. I was going to ask you about how the pandemic mm -hmm. affected everything. So now, you know, it's always been, for the community, it's always been word of mouth. Mm -hmm. They know where we are and they even know who our staff is. So even if our staff is going grocery shopping they'll get stopped and you know they think they're always working but they're just going shopping they're just trying to shop <laughs> <laughs> but we're always there to help the community but outside of that if you're interested in volunteering and getting to know us better um, providing your monetary support or in-kind donations you can always go to the website like you said you can call me directly to my phone number that is 970-818-0126 that is 970-818-0126. You can email me at analia, A-N-A-L-I-A, at thefamilycenterfc.org. I love giving tours. I love meeting for coffee and just talking about what we're passionate what about. You do. It sounds like it. It's great. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about it after a quick break. Uh, we are speaking with Ana Lea, Development Director at Family Center La Familia. And here's Duran Jones and the Indications, and we'll be right back on K4CO. And as I said earlier, we are joined with Ana Lea, Development Director at Family Center La Familia. And I want to make sure we cover all the bases here, Ana Lea. Um, you have uh, something to share with us. Yes. So one of the exciting things, we love to come together with other organizations and collaborate when we see gaps in the system. And I'm sure a lot of schools and school districts in the area would share my sentiment and our sentiment that there's not enough teachers going into the workforce. Yeah. Um, and our teachers are so incredibly important for the growth of our community, for the health of our community. So we came together with Front Range Community College as we see that there is also a lack of teachers in the early childhood education sector. And what does that mean? For example, we do have some teachers that are uh, Spanish speakers only, and they they wish, or even our, our bilingual teachers that their first language is, in, is uh, Spanish, and they wish they could have learned and gotten their certificate in Spanish while taking those courses in Spanish because that's their heart language, mm -hmm. that's how they understand things better, even myself. My first language is Spanish. If I can learn or read something in Spanish, I'd rather do that yeah. than in in another language. Makes sense. So we partner with Front Range Community College, and we're providing three courses in Spanish um, towards the early childhood education uh, certificate. And we have ECE 1031, which is guidance strategies for young, young children. We have ECE 2381, which is child growth and development. And we're going to start a third course as well in the spring. And you can do these online. The hours are flexible, hands-on learning, 
all in Spanish. So if you have to present to your peers or you have to test out, you're doing it in Spanish. You're doing it in a language that you know by heart. Um, the early child education degrees and certificates are available at no cost to students. Tuition fees, course materials, and other costs are completely covered by the state of Colorado. So you just have to sign up and people at Farm Range will help you kind of navigate all those, you know, all those costs and situations and paperwork. And we're just so excited. It started in the fall. Classes, the first two courses were full. And we just can't wait to just get more more people in the workforce because our kids need it. Mm -hmm. And are is there any specific requirements, qualifications that you need for this program, or just no, nope. just wanting and willingness to to change children's lives. Just go ask for help. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, well, and you certainly do rely on volunteers and donations and. We do. Go ahead and mm -hmm. tell us how we can donate, volunteer. Yeah. So right now, um, if you're in Colorado, you've heard about Colorado Gives Day. That's December 5th. Big day for a lot of organizations. Okay. Um, our goal for Colorado Gives Day is 40000 If there's anybody out there that would love to give us a match donation or just donate for that day, uh, that would be absolutely wonderful. And you can do that through Colorado Gives Day page by searching for us, the Family Center La Familia. Or you can go through our website and you can get a link through Colorado Gives Day there or just donate directly as well. And then cool. through December 31st, our end of the year Play It Forward campaign, which is what a lot of organizations do is, you know, their end of the year letter. Um, our goal is 85000 So between Colorado Gives Day and end of the year, our goal is 125000 And we need these donations to come through now more than ever to be able to keep helping these children, helping the families, helping community members continue to feel safe, supported, and thriving. Yeah, to keep this amazing program going. Um, how, well, let's, uh, let's get your contacts again. You mm -hmm. rail those off before the yeah, last song, absolutely. but I want to make sure everybody... Uh, Here's that again. Take yeah, so if you want to learn more about us or even schedule a tour of the center or if your company likes to give um, to organizations, uh, we'd be more than happy to come present. Uh, my phone number is 970-818-0126. Again, that is 970-818-0126. My email is analia, A-N-A. LIA at thefamilycenterfc.org and we're located north of Old Town in Fort Collins. So even if you're not local, it's a beautiful drive up 25. It is. <laughs> and, <laughs> it is. And, and you can just come and hang out. I'll get you some tea or coffee or whatever you like and we'll, we'll chat and we'll Take show the you tour. around. Take the tour. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Did we, uh, is there anything else? I didn't, I want to make sure we cover all our bases here. No, I think you ask great questions and we're just so grateful to have um, a station like like this really supporting local. Of course. It's, it's so important. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we're uh, trying to do here. Uh, once again, Family Center La Familia. Um, I've got their website in front of you. I've been checking it out all morning and um, it is really helpful, informative. It's not too busy or confusing and right at the top left is that donate button so uh, be sure to check it out donate if you want to volunteer or if you could use their services i mean check them out it's a very positive looking encouraging program i would say anybody can use our services School. yeah i think the only thing um, for utility assistance um you have to be within larimer county okay. but if you're outside of larimer county we know who you can contact gotcha. for, for your help. You have referrals as we well. We have referrals and other resources as well. Perfect. You guys sound so helpful. It's very inspirational. It's nice. It's encouraging. Thank you. <laughs> Analia, thank you so much for being here. Thank Thanks you for so joining much. us.